How's it, everybody? And welcome, welcome to Kurt Francis and your Francis team talking about a real estate market update. And we are actually talking about the 12 indicators in a market shift, 12 indicators in a market shift. And, and today we're going to be talking about two of them, two of the 12, but number one or number six, first time home buyers. First time home buyers is the first section we're going to talk about, first time home buyers. And then the second section we're going to be talking about is affordability is affordability. We focus on Southern California. We focus on San Diego County. And a lot of these principles are exactly the same all across the United States. Uh, there's, all, of course, differences in every single market. But this is what we are talking about. So your friends, esteem, real estate market update, July 22nd, uh, 2022, rather. So let's get straight to it and talking about it. If you've missed some of the different things we've been talking about, the 12 indicators in the past, just go back a few and uh, you'll see. So we're progressively going through all the 12 indicators and just, just you know, go back to other ones if you want to see it. There are great discussions. So today we're going to be talking about first-time home buyers, first-time home buyers. And, and you know, why do we talk about first-time home buyers in a market shift? Well, that always indicates a lot. So let's get straight to it. First-time home buyers still near decade highs. Just look at that. See, the long run is about 37.2%. Okay, of, of all transactions are actually first time home buyers. Very interesting. Right now we're sitting about 35.5. So there's still people that are first time home buyer. What's a first time home buyer? A first time home buyer is number one person buying the home for the first time. Okay, for the first time. Also, what's considered as a first time home buyer in many, many times is when you sold a home and you haven't owned one for three years or longer and or you lost it, you lost your home through whatever a tragedy, whatever happened. And then you consider as a first-time home buyer as well. So it's not that the person never ever bought a home before, but they haven't owned a home in the last three years, or they sold their previous home. And uh, so a lot of those numbers can be adjusted. But that's kind of what we're talking about. So the people that have lost their homes come back into their home for whatever reason. They travel, they went around the world, lived in another country, and they come back and they regard it as a first-time home buyer again because they haven't owned a home in the last uh, two to three years, but generally three years. Like I said, that's what we're talking about. So the long run is uh, 37.2, and we're about 35.5. So that's still still healthy until the end of end of the last year. NAR, what's the NAR? National Association of Realtors reports it shows millennial home buyers continues to rise. So there are more people, more millennials that are buying homes right now. And very interesting if you look at the you know the the dark color blue and the light color blue. What is the difference? Well, it's between sellers and buyers you're going to see more millennials are buying than actually selling, right? That makes sense. And uh, as you get older, if you look at the different generations, you get you know, older people more selling um, and then buying, okay? So the, 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 the people that are kind of generally old in age, uh, not millennials, they are selling and then press buying as well. But of course, they, a lot of them are, okay? But generally, it, the millennials are buying. Why is that important? Because that shows that there's there's still confidence and believing in the real estate market, which is really great because it's really a safe haven to put your money in. So a lot of people don't talk about this. I love to talk about it, and I love this report by the NAR, National Association of Realtors. We're going to go quickly into affordability, number seven, seven of the 12 indicators, affordability. Well, now this is interesting, right? Interest rates impact. We've spoken about that. But interest rates impact affordability. What can people afford? Now, this is like a million-dollar home. If, you, if you're looking at a buyer buying a million-dollar home, okay, at 3.25, which is January 2022, this year, where the rates were 3.25, if you're buying a million-dollar home, you're paying 3,917 plus minus per month, depending on the loan program and a number of other things. Okay, um, that's, that's what it was costing you, 3,917. Right now, okay, going up to 6%, you're paying 1,479 more. So, in other words, it's gone up from 3,917 to 5,396. That's the difference in interest rates. So, less people can afford to buy the home that they intended to buy or wanted to buy or thought they could buy, okay, because they need another $1,400 per month. That's a lot of money on a family's budget, okay? And you just see if it was 5.5%, it's 1,193. Big difference. So it keeps on, you know, big difference. However, let me stress, let me just tell you something now. Interest rates are still low, okay, at 6%. I remember when I sold my house in South Africa in 1999, in 1998, 1999, we were at an interest rate of 24%, 24%. I know a lot of American people talk about 
Uh, and I sold my house. In, I sold my house in two weeks at 24%. 24% interest rate. You know that you get four of those and you get 100%, <laughs> right? And uh, I know in the United States, we're talking about the 18% were, were high, you know, different times. And so I, I know what that means. There's still buyers out there, but you can't buy what you thought you could afford. So, so that's understand affordability. Okay, Sandia County affordability over time. Now, this is very interesting. This is what, what people can afford, right? And if you look at 19, 1980, right, 60%, 60% payment as percentage of income, where you, the, the payment of your mortgage was 60% of all your income. In 1990, it went down to 48%, it's still high. In 2000, 39% of your income went to buying, buying a home. Phenomenal difference from 60%, right? 2007, you see a climb again, dropped in 2012. Why? Because that's when we, that was a result of the 2008 as a long kind of market shift that just went down and down and down and more people could afford homes because only 28% of their income went to paying the mortgage, right? And we saw it increase slightly in 2020, 21, and then 2022, 60%, and it's going to increase, 60% of your income goes to paying a house off. Now, San Diego numbers um, are, you know, we can look at this, this slide quickly, and then we say share something. Markets with highest payment to income ratio, Los Angeles. 71% of your income goes to paying a house. That's Los Angeles. That's extremely high. Nearly 72%. Look at San Jose. San Diego is 63.8, basically 64% right now. And that that's gonna that's gonna climb a little bit. It's gonna climb a little bit higher. Okay. But it's probably gonna drop as well because we're gonna see a, a different change in pricing as well. Now, incomes have increased, but they haven't increased to that same rate, as we know. So at San Diego, we're looking at about 64% right now. And you're going to see that fluctuate a little bit, go up and come down a little bit. What I want to share with you, look at this. California housing affordability in the first quarter of 2022. Okay, 24% of Californian households, there's a whole of California, 24% of Californian households could afford to purchase a median price home. Only 24%. San Diego, it's about 13%. Only 13% of the people in San Diego can afford to buy a home at the price right now. Remember I said about, uh, you know, one of the sellers uh, in La Jolla said, Kurt, I can't afford to buy the owner, my own home that I already own. I can't afford to buy it now. Okay. I can't afford to buy the home that I'm living in. A lot of people are living in homes that they can't even afford to buy it, their own home right now in terms of income, in terms of pricing, in terms of interest rates terms of you know where the market is they can't afford that so san diego is about 13 percent 13 percent now if you look at other cities around the nation and other smaller towns that will change you're going to see you know a lot more people can afford to buy homes you look at texas alabama mississippi you know even florida and uh you know oklahoma look at different places colorado you know yet some of the cities are getting expensive as well i get that but i want you to understand that i want you to understand that so this is very very interesting affordability is that that so hopefully hopefully more people will be able to afford but the problem is interest rates are still high people can't afford it right now okay kurt francis from your francis team going live gone live and if you've got any questions give me a call cannot wait to chat with you can you do me a favor can you have the greatest day of your life